Hey guys, on one of the recent tool pick series, I uh, featured this uh, pick of a, uh, a super spacer. It's a uh, import model. It actually uh, turns out to be a pretty good copy of a Cushman. Uh, it's almost identical to a Cushman that I've seen photos of online. And this particular one, uh, it's got some issues that uh, basically even when I disengage the locking pin, um, it does not want to rotate and I've tried putting a lot more pressure on this I even tried uh, chucking a bar in here and putting a wrench on that so this is tight way too tight so I want to uh, get to the bottom of that and then while we're at it we also are going to we being me and the mouse in my pocket are going to take a look at this chuck that's on here because the jaws seem to be binding a little bit so there might be some swarf stuck in the uh, scroll and we're going to treat the uh, repair of the, uh, or, or the servicing of the chuck as a separate issue uh, in a different video. So I'm going to, uh, as the first step in this particular repair of the super spacer, I'm going to just remove the chuck, which is a simple matter of removing these three long bolts right here. Alright, I took these three long bolts out, but this is uh, in a pretty tight tolerance stuck in there <laughs> on a larger super spacer it's probably not a bad idea at all to have something underneath here so that if the truck drops out it doesn't uh, damage anything there we go and that right there is a good indication of a lot of the issue. Look at all that swarf that's in there. So we'll, like I said, we'll set that chuck off to the side and we'll take care of that in a different video. Alright, so I, now that I got it out of the parts washer and all cleaned up, I took out these six bolts that hold what I believe they, I believe they hold this plate on to this assembly. And there are two threaded holes right here uh, that take 10 millimeter bolts. And I believe those holes are there for you to thread bolts down into and that they'll press on the other side there and pop this off. At least that's my hope. But I don't have a lot of really long 10 millimeter bolts, so... I can run these bolts almost all the way down. They start to push a little bit, but then they pretty much run out of room. Um, the heads bottom out. So I'm just looking to see if I've got some dowel pins. I can drop down in there and hopefully, oh yeah, that's coming right up. I'm just hand tightening these in and then pushing it up. And there we go. That wasn't too difficult. Take my dowel pins out. So let's see. Will that whole front piece come off now if I just lift this up? No. Okay. Interesting. So the next question is, what is holding this onto the front? What is keeping that from being able to release? Almost looks like it might be this tensioning assembly here. Oh, let's see, that's, see, that's off now, okay. It's 
So, I mean, it could be just stuck in that bore, and that might be why it doesn't rotate in the first place. My thinking right now is that if this was not seized and was able to turn, that it would probably slide out the front. I could press on this lightly and see what happens. There's some damage right here. That looks like somebody had a punch or something on here. I wonder if somebody was already trying to get this out unsuccessfully. Hmm. Actually, um, I decided just for the heck of it to try and turn this, and now this turns turns nicely. Well, not nicely. I mean, it doesn't sound that great, but it's it's turning freely now. Interesting. And it does want to kind of come out. I can feel something is hanging it up. Yeah, it's definitely that uh, that braking mechanism. I can see them those shoes moving as I try and take this out. All right, let's see if I uh, if I undo this mechanism like really far. If that'll open up enough to drop, let this drop out. See, there's a wedge shape to it. So that's how the clamping action works. So the only way to get that out is, it looks like maybe I'll have to take this all the way out. And I'm gonna have to get that other side out. So there must be a way to turn. I could see there's a, uh, there's a socket headed cap screw on this side. Oh, I see what you do. So what you do is you rotate this shoe assembly around, I bet. I bet you can rotate this shoe assembly around so that that socket head lines up with the hole that I just took that uh, post out of. And uh, then I can loosen that. Well, that's just a theory. Okay, so no, that's not right because the locking pin here, even when I retract it, I was going to say the locking pin's in the way. I could take the locking pin out, but that's not going to solve my problem because there's actually, it's, the pin itself is inside of a sleeve and the sleeve is what's actually in the way. There we go, got it started. Oh, there we go. All right. Oh, there's some swarf that I didn't get out. Guessing this might be spring loaded. All right, so see, I can't turn this. If I keep turning this, I think the rack and pinion will allow this to back all the way out, but I can't turn this any further. But I think the idea is that we Loosen this jam nut, and I think if we back this Allen screw out, the scrub screw out, I think this whole thing will slide right out of here. So I don't have to take this all the way out to uh, <clears throat> to remove this, but I'm going to do it anyways because I don't want this to fall out when I'm working on it later and get lost. I'd much rather lose it right here on the workbench. All right, so now this sucker right here should slide right out. You know, the sad thing is I don't think that does anything as far as solve my problem of getting that other piece out. But the good news is I could see this is really dirty and could benefit from uh, cleaning, lubricating, and reassembly. I mean, the spring is just, yeah. All right. 
So it's starting to look like that sleeve that that rides in is part of the casting. It doesn't isn't made to come out of there. All right, there is a little cutout right here, and methinks maybe that is for me to get in here with a uh, Allen wrench and just like barely be able to move that thing. You know, it occurs to me if I manage to get this bolt backed out far enough to uh, to separate that and get that to drop out like I want it to, when I go to put it back together, I'm not going to really know how much I need to tighten that up to get the proper tension on both sides. So, I mean, I guess I could figure it out, but just for the hell of it, I think I'm going to take my inside calipers here and uh, I'm going to take a measurement... All right, it'll be a crude indicator, <laughs> uh, you know, because of the angle there and everything. But I'm taking that measurement close to the close to the spring, so it'll give me a rough idea where to start with that adjustment when I go to put that back in. Well, I can't get an Allen wrench in there, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify this Allen wrench. I actually took a sharpie and I kind of gauged where I want to cut off this thing short just leave enough of this on here so that I can get into the socket and still turn it um, the other idea I had was you know using a, a bit like this but the problem I'm gonna have with that is getting it in there without dropping it and then getting a wrench to stay on there and so I'll just take uh, you know I got a bunch of spare Allen wrenches around here I'll sacrifice one pretty sure this is the size because I was able to get it kind of kind of in there but I then I don't have enough room to really make the turn if I modify this it should work so I'm just gonna use the cutoff disc uh, on my handheld grinder and zip that off yet if it's so horrid here's my modified Allen wrench Well, it took a while, but I finally got this loose enough to where I could actually pop this past, past that and get it out. And I'm glad I didn't have to take it all the way out because I would probably have a heck of a time trying to get this back in and get that bolt started. So now, let's see whether or not that's really what was holding this in there. Yeah, sure was. That and just what looks to be, I don't know if that's rust or grease, old grease. There's probably some swarf in there somewhere. Yeah, there's a piece of swarf right there. All right, in the key area. All right, so back to the parts cleaner with this thing. Although I think I'm gonna knock off for tonight. Well, now that I got the parts, done uh wiped off in the parts cleaner dried off uh you can start to see the anatomy of exactly how this thing is supposed to work as far as lubrication goes so there's a light it's kind of hard to see but there's a sh very shallow wide fairly wide groove right here in a circle okay and that circle is not concentric to the central bore and the reason for that is because the way this is supposed to work is that oil is supposed to come up through this hole right here okay and flow through this little canal and by having this off-center this circle off-center that uh, is how they get distribution of oil on the whole width of this this uh, pad so we've got a little ball detent type spring loaded um, fitting right here where the lubrication goes in and when the lubrication is pushed into here it comes out of two spots it comes out of a hole right here and goes into this canal that I just talked about but it also comes out of a hole here okay and there's actually a spiral groove 
in this part of the casting and that's what lubricates these surfaces so the question in my mind is what was the intent as far as lubrication goes <laughs> two possibilities here oil of some type or grease of some type um, I'm not quite sure what was in here I don't think it was grease I think most of the crap that was in here the crud was oil that had stuff that had stuck to it over the years I was able to find a reprint of an original Hartford Super Spacer manual online and it tells you just about everything you wanted to know about a Hartford Super Spacer and the one thing that I couldn't find going through page after page of the manual and looking at everything was what are you putting here for lubrication as crazy as it sounds it wasn't in the manual and the manual was pretty pretty good I mean it showed exploded views uh, and I'll tell you whoever made this super spacer it is a dead ringer knockoff of the Hartford so unfortunately, I don't know for sure what to put in here. And then if you go online and you try and find people asking that question, you find people asking the question and not getting definitive answers. They're getting answers from people saying, well, I use this or I use that. But they don't say, well, I use this because this is what's supposed to be in there. Nobody's saying that. And then uh, if, you, if you see any other videos on YouTube, I've seen a couple of them. They're either videos of guys showing how to use them or just showing that they have one. Um, and the couple of one videos where I saw teardowns, again, same kind of situation. They tear it down, they clean it, they put it back together, and then they decide to lube it. So um, one guy used whey oil, which if I had whey oil, might not be a bad idea. Um, but I'm going to just use a, uh, a machine oil and because that's what I have, and it's better than nothing. So I'm going to put a liberal coat of oil on this surface here um, by the way these little ball detent oilers if you haven't seen one before see it's a little ball that's spring loaded and the idea is that you insert the nozzle of the oiler in there and it pushes the ball in and then you force the oil in and then when you take the nozzle away that little spring ball pops back out and that's supposed to keep the oil from leaking back out all right, but they also, uh, I think I've also seen these used in applications where grease was used. So anyways, so the first thing I want to do is I want to get some oil on this surface and this surface so I can get this back in here. All right, so I got a light coat of oil on that surface there and on this inner surface. And I even pre-charged that galley a little bit with oil. And I'm going to carefully put this in place. And there we go. And I can hear it quieting right down as that oil gets distributed. Great. Next, I'm going to get these brake shoes back in. Uh, and it's kind of hard. See, they don't want to really go in because that's in the way but if I pick this up and just let that slide down a little bit okay and then drop these in then I can push this back down and we're all set there now <laughs> I've got to go through the painstaking process of tightening that bolt back up to get this back to roughly the the uh, dimension that I had it at before I started this whole thing which I have not touched the setting on my inside calipers so that I can go right ahead and stick this right in here and we could see uh, actually how far I actually ended up actually moving that thing that's uh that's that's close to a half inch so i'm gonna have to turn that a ways and i decided that i would 
maybe try after all putting a uh, putting a bit in there and seeing if I can't sneak a uh, my little quarter inch wrench in there to turn this. Wouldn't that be nice? I don't think I'm going to be that lucky, but we'll see. So for starters, see if I can grab this with uh, these needle nose and get it engaged in the... Yeah, okay. Oh, I can see this is going to work out a lot better than my, <laughs> my little Allen wrench that I was having so much trouble with. Oh, I feel silly not having done this. It does have a tendency to, the bit has a tendency to want to fall out. So I've got this bolt tightened to the point where now I've got just the slightest amount of drag on my inside calipers. So that should be right where it was when I started taking this thing apart. So now I'm going to insert that other bolt right here and uh, I'm going to tighten it up and see whether or not this locks correctly. I think it's working okay. I think I've got to have that master plate which acts as the retainer to this whole thing in place for it to be tested correctly. So the next step is I'm gonna install my master plate. So, um, what I learned since I started working on this thing from that manual that I found online, that reprint of the, uh, the old reprint of the Hartford Superspacer manual, is that uh, what this is called is this is called a master plate or a master ring. And that typically they come with a 24 tooth one like this. There were other ones available. For the genuine Hartford you could get custom ones or ones that had different divisions um, but the master plate gives you a lot of versatility with the 24 divisions and then the idea was to make it a really quick acting super spacer there was a thin steel plate like I showed I think earlier in this video uh, and that's called a masking plate. And what the masking plate does is the masking plate bolts right to the back of this master um, master ring. And that's what these two holes are for. So these two holes are to, to mount that master plate. And the master plate is that thin steel plate. And that would obscure... Um, all but certain ones of these grooves, thereby converting this instantly from 24 divisions to say three divisions, four divisions, or whatever. So that's what um, I do not have for this super spacer. But again, just like I already mentioned, that doesn't mean that this isn't still pretty versatile because it still has the 24 tooth master plate in it. And I was kind of talking and not paying attention and made the mistake of just trying to slap this on here and realized I'm never going to get this to line up. So the way I was supposed to do this, if I wasn't blabbing and paying attention, uh, is that I should have should have got the bolts started on this thing. 
so that I was partly lined up to keep the alignment. So I've got, okay. Now, I don't know whether or not it's critical how this goes on or not, um, but I know that this is definitely the side that faces down towards this inside because there's cups for the socket head screws to sit in. Furthermore, um, you know what? That didn't clean up well at all. All right, pardon me. So what I started to say before I got distracted by my poor cleaning job was that uh, this is clearly the side that faces down. This is the side that faces up because the cap screw heads are countersunk in these little cups. So uh, question was, does it matter, you know, which way this goes on? And I don't know if it does or not, but I can see a ghost outline on the uh, metal right here that clearly shows me where my 10 millimeter bolt was pushing when I took this off. And there's the other one. So I know these are my two 10 millimeter holes. So this probably went on this way. Or it could be exactly 180 degrees off right there. I don't know. There we go. It just dropped right in. This is not a metric T-handled wrench. Thought it dropped all the way in. Just did now. Okay. All right. Whatever. I have a metric one right here. I'll do my final tightening with that. This is just a little quicker. As a matter of fact, I could do even quicker than that. Now I've got to reassemble this assembly.
I just push that all the way in so that it's in one of the teeth and uh, by doing that I don't have to worry about that rotating in this bore while I'm trying to reassemble this uh, mechanism so I've got to know exactly how I want to put this I don't want the handle to be interfering with anything. There's some damage on this pinion gear. And if I had to venture a guess, I would say that they were probably having a problem where, because they hadn't taken this part and cleaned it correctly and it had been sticking, that they were banging on that handle to get that tooth to fully seat. Or it was jamming in there and they were banging the handle to release it. Either way, that was not a good idea. having to preload that sp I don't remember the spring being that heavily preloaded huh Did I put the wrong spring in the brake assembly? Oh man, why do I think I put the wrong spring in that brake assembly? I think the OD of this spring is supposed to be small enough to go inside that piece that I just put inside there and it doesn't. And I think the reason is because I accidentally switched these two springs. All right, well, you don't need to see me undo this mistake. Well, this is pretty embarrassing. Not only did I get the springs mixed up, I didn't even put a spring in here. So this spring belongs in here. And the spring that I need for this over here must be over at the parts washer. I'd say that's probably a good general rule of thumb. If you're missing a part, check your parts washer. <laughs> oh.
Okay, I'm back after my last little snafu, and here is the spring that I was looking for. Which you can see it's a smaller diameter, so it actually fits inside of that rack toothed part. Okay, so. Now, I need to install this cap. Tricky, but it can be done. Now, installing and timing, so to speak, this handle. I need to make sure that I can push this over far enough to completely disengage that tooth before I run out of room here. I can ensure that if I decided to put this way back here like this, but then that puts us in a bad spot to get at if I need to adjust it while this is in the vertical position on the, on the mill of the table. So ideally I'd like to find a compromise uh, let's see if I just left it right there in the middle like that. How does that look? Oh yeah, that that gives it plenty of retraction, so I think that might be good right there. No. The hell do I know? <clears throat> now I need to install this. This long special grub screw or set screw. OK. 
Okay, so I don't want this to be locking this handle. I want this to be in there far enough so that it's so that this can't pull out. Oops. What the? Oh, is this not supposed to be all the way down? Bet you it's not. This is supposed to go into this groove, so I had this in too far. So I need to pull this up. What I'll do is I'll I'll put this in finger tight, drop this down to the point where I just feel that be able to screw in. Just right there. There we go. Okay. Now we're in. Same deal. I don't want it in so far that. It's not locking that. That's not what we want. And there should be a position where it drops all the way down. All right? Thought that was. It's right there. Yeah, right there. So maybe that's still too far. Let's see. Back that up a little bit more. There we go. So that keeps it retained all the way out. So that's where I want it. Now I'm going to put this jam nut on and I'll hold that set screw from turning and tighten this jam nut. It's probably metric, but maybe I'll get lucky and can. locked in that's released locked that's what I want I think that's it okay one more test Locked in the release position. There we go. Seems all right. I'm going to put this cover plate back on. Again, normally this little space right in here would have a mask plate that you could put in here. And then you put the cover back on when you're done. Changing out the plate.
started this project a little while ago and I can't remember whether or not there was a screw missing from this cover plate or not. But I only have, I had all the screws together and I only saw two. I'll double check and make sure that there isn't another one sitting over there. But I think this might have been missing one of these screws when I started. No, I found it. Thought it was. Oh, you know what? That's what happens when you have random cap screws laying around on your workbench. Well, I'll tell you, that sure looks like the right one. Yeah, that's the right one. Why the heck won't that go in this hole? Oh, that's a bummer. Something wrong with that hole? Uh, tell it's an import that hole was drilled and tapped at a slight angle might not be perceptible on the camera but take my word for it it is at least that's that's my excuse for why I couldn't get this to go in till now <laughs> it's as good as good as, a, good as excuse as any I guess All right, let's see how the B stacks now. I could turn that easily with my hand. If I had the chuck on here, I could just grab the chuck and turn it easily. That's a far cry from what it was doing before. So we're gonna call this done. Uh, all it's left to do is Remount the chuck back on here, which is, you know, it just locates on this boss right here and you put the three bolts in uh, And the chuck repair is going to be covered in a separate video because hey What YouTube needs needs right now more than anything is another scroll chuck maintenance video All right, if you're not already a subscriber, please consider subscribing. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did making it Take care.